when you read John Lee's autobiography, you notice the number of times that he made vows, vowing to sit all night, vowing to do this, vowing to do that. The word for vow in Thai is atitan, which is also translated as determination. You make up your mind, you're determined you're going to do something. And making determinations like this gives strength to your practice. Otherwise, you just sit and meditate for a while, well, that's enough for today. And you don't push your limits. And as a result, you don't get a taste of what lies outside the limits of your expectations. Because as the Buddha said, the purpose of the practice is to see what you've never seen before, to realize what you've never realized before. And many of these things you'd never see or realize also lie outside the bounds of your imagination. In order to see them, you have to learn how to push yourself more than you might imagine. But it has to be done with skill. That's why the Buddha said there are various qualities that go into a good vow, a good determination. And the very first one is discernment. Learning how to distinguish what is a useful vow. What's one that you're pushing yourself not too little, not too much? Something that you can do or something that's just a little outside your ordinary expectations. Not so much that you come crashing down. So it's choosing the things to vow. It's the very first element in, in determination and being wise in that choice. And it's important that you focus on, you focus your choice on things that you do rather than the results you hope to get from what you do. Otherwise you put yourself at the mercy of all sorts of things that lie beyond your control. In other words, you can't sit here and say, well, I want to get the first John or the second John or whatever, but you can say, okay, I want to stay here. I'm going to be mindful of every breath for the next whole hour. Each and every one. That's focusing on the causes. As for whether you get a particular level of concentration or not, that's going to be the results. And although it's important to have specific goals in your practice, this is something that many people miss. They think, well, having a goal means that you're constantly depressed by not reaching your goal. Well, that's not how you relate to goals in a skillful way. You set a goal that's realistic, and then you figure out what the causes are, what the actions that you can do are that will get you there, and then you focus on those actions. You can't practice without a goal, otherwise everything would just sort of fall apart and yourself would start wondering why you're here, why you're meditating. It's learning how to relate in an intelligent way to your goal. That's important. And that's part of the discernment that forms the, this factor in determination. Sometimes we're taught not to have goals in the meditation. Usually it's on meditation retreats. You're in a high pressure cooker environment, have a limited amount of time. And so you push, 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 push. Without any discernment, you can do yourself some harm. So in a short term like that, it's wise not to focus on particular results that you want to get. You know, I spent two weeks at that monastery or spent a week at this particular meditation center and I came back with the first jhana, like a trophy. And you usually end up, if you get something that you can call jhana when you take home, it's, it's like that, the image of the unripe mango. You've got a green mango on your tree and someone comes along and says, well, a ripe mango is yellow and it's soft. Yours is green and it's hard. 
So you squeeze it to make it soft, and you paint it yellow to make it look ripe. But it's not a mango, not a ripe mango. It's usually a ruined mango. And a lot of quick jhana is just like that. You read, it's supposed to be like this, you take this element and you add that element, and presto, there you are, jhana. When you set time limits for yourself that way, you end up with who knows what. And it's best to have overall long-range goals, and then if you're going to, for your immediate goals, focus on, as I said, the causes of what you're going to do. You're going to be mindful of the breath. You're going to be as sensitive as possible to the breath. When you get up from meditation, you're going to maintain your awareness of the breath. Fight off the distractions that come with hearing other people talk, thoughts of having one last Coke or coffee before you head off to your tent, whatever. Try to stay centered in the breath. Make that your determination. The next element, once you've made up your mind what your goal is going to be, how you're going to approach it, then you have to be true to that. In other words, you really stick with it and don't suddenly change your mind mid-course. The only reason for changing your mind would be if you find you really are doing serious damage to yourself. Okay, then you have to reconsider the situation. Otherwise, if it's just an inconvenience or it's a hardship, you just stick with it no matter what. This is your way of learning how to trust yourself. When they talk about truthfulness, satcha, it's not simply speaking the truth, but it's sticking truly to what you've made up your mind to do. If you don't stick truly to that, you become a traitor to yourself. And when you find that you can't rely on yourself, well, who do you rely on, rely on then? You go hoping for someone else to rely on, well, they can't do the work that you have to do. So you learn to be true to your determination. The third quality is relinquishment. In other words, as you are true to your determination, there are going to be things you have to give up. There's a verse from the Dhammapada. If you, you see that there's a greater happiness that comes from abandoning a lesser happiness, well, be willing to abandon that lesser happiness for the sake of the greater one. There was one Pali scholar who insisted that that couldn't possibly mean the meaning of the, the verse because it was so obvious. But you look at people's lives and it's not obvious at all. Many times they give up the long-term happiness for some quick fix. Taking the easy way out for today, well then you take the easy way out for the next day and the next day and then whatever you want just never happens. The momentum never builds up. Because those are the real things that pull you off the path. It's the other things that look good and promise a quicker gratification. But then once you've got it, many times you don't get any gratification at all. It was all an illusion. Or you get a little bit, but it's not worth it. It's one of the reasons why the Buddha has those Images for sensual pleasure, like a drop of honey on a knife blade, or a burning torch as you're running, facing the wind, and you've got this torch upwind of you. Or a little piece of flesh that a small bird has, and other bigger birds are going to come and try to steal it away, and they're willing to kill the smaller bird if they don't get it. They're pretty harsh images, but they're that way on purpose. Because when the mind gets fixated on a sensual pleasure, it just doesn't want to listen to anybody. But you have to keep in mind, if you re look at sensual pleasures realistically, you realize there's nothing much, no true gratification and a lot of danger. I once had a dream that depicted the sensual world. It was basically dreamers and killers. Dreamers and thieves, dreamers and criminals, not that way. People, some people sit around thinking about what they like, and other people decide they won't take no for an answer. They're going to get what they want. And it's a very unpleasant world to be in. And that's the way it is, but we tend to forget. 
because we're so wrapped up in our dreams, so wrapped up in our desires. We don't look at the reality of what we do in our process of dreaming, what we do in the process of trying to get what we want. Just learn how to think in these ways. This is one of the reasons why you start out with discernment. You have to use discernment all the way along the path to remind yourself that those lesser pleasures really are lesser. They're not worth the effort, and especially not worth what you're giving up in terms of a larger pleasure, larger happiness, a larger well-being. The final element is peace. It has two meanings. One is, in the course of working towards your goal, try to keep the mind at a level of calm. Don't get worked up over the difficulties. Don't get worked up over the things you're having to give up. Try to keep an even temper throughout it. The second meaning of calm here is that once you've reached the goal, there should be an element of calm. If you've reached the goal and the mind is still all stirred up, it's a sign you chose the wrong goal. There should be a deeper pacification, a deeper calmness that sets in once you've attained the goal. As the Buddha said, it's normal while you're working towards a goal that there's going to be a certain amount of dissatisfaction. You've got something you want and you don't, you're not there yet. And some people advise, well, in order to get rid of that particular dissatisfaction, just lower your standards. Don't have goals. But that's selling yourself short. That's a very unskillful way of trying to get rid of that sense of dissatisfaction. The skillful way is to do what has to be done to get there, to the goal that you want. Okay, then the dissatisfaction is replaced, if it's a proper goal, by peace. So as you look at the goals in your meditation, look at the goals in your life. Try to keep these four qualities in mind. Be discerning in your choice of a goal and the path which you're going to, that you're going to follow in order to get there. And then be, once you've made up your mind that it is a, a wise goal, then be true to your determination. Don't be a traitor to it. Be willing to give up the lesser pleasures that get in the way. Try to keep the mind on an even keel as you work toward it. That way you find that you stretch yourself, not to the point of breaking, but you stretch yourself in ways that allow you to grow. And as you learn to push yourself a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more than you thought possible, after a while, each little bit becomes quite a lot as it all adds up. And you find the practice can take you to places that you otherwise wouldn't have imagined. <laughs>